Welcome to Grey Overload. I'm Anthony, and this is an interesting story. It's something I've been following here. I was on Reddit. I got back and forth, and now we're getting some more information about AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPUs are burn or burns up, kills itself. And this uh, one, I'm also on WCCF Tech here. And let's just jump over so you guys can take a look at this. I, I'm really interested in to know what you guys thoughts are on this i am i'm i'm shocked that it's happening on the second generation because i thought that this would be the thing on the first generation <laughs> so i'm like this is kind of backwards but I, I think as we get into it um and as time progresses on we'll understand it more um so the 78 you know 100 3d is burning up and I, there is an update. The user has made a following statement regarding this of AMD and Asus' response in the matter. So I have to say, I, we're going through um, this little response here, but I first want to say uh, this, res this article was written on the 22nd, so a couple days ago, and I think that's when it started circulating on Reddit around that time. And here the update is, I believe, today, but um, two days, and that was over a weekend. That's pretty good. AMD responded with a prepaid shipping label for the RMA. Asus also did some stuff and offered replacement parts um, to reduce downtime, which is great. I, I really think that you guys could keep improving this. Now, he made a big um, thing on Reddit. This got a lot of news. You know, treat every customer as a first-rate customer. That's, you know, that's, that's what gets in my good graces. That's what I like to see because, you know, that customer that's having a hard time, and I've dealt with Asus, I've probably bought and gosh, maybe like 200 Asus motherboards over my time. I've bought a lot of motherboards um, from every company, but I think around 200 or so from Asus, give or take. And uh, they've done a really good job in RMAs overall throughout those years. So, um, it, you know, it's only been one business day because it was an end of the week. Okay, so that's... Uh, end of the week but asus and amd did a fantastic job according to this user so that's uh that's good but i think uh i think they want the parts back now this was an interesting thing asus said it brought to their attention that technically isn't warranted by amd due to the use of expo this is interesting because i thought expo was a verified approved process like this uh person mentions on the memory settings, but not in not an overclock. However, this is according to ASUS not the case. So, be careful if you're using these X3 chips with your BIOS ver version and everything else, uh, because as we'll get into with BIOS version a little bit later. But it seems like not everything is supported by the X3D that is supported on the regular. 7000 series. So th this is going to muddy the waters a little, little bit, but I do think that AMD should just RMA stuff. If it is Expo, you just cover it. I mean, that is your touted uh, memory, you know, XMP equivalent, your memory uh, overclocking equivalent. You just support it, or you make sure that when your BIOS come out, um, you know, that it's disabled in the areas that it's not supported. But I think that if you're um, benefiting from Expo, you know, you're talking to all these vendors and you're promoting it as much as it is, it has to be one of those things that are supported. It can't be, yeah, we're not supporting this, we're not on this because you have this enabled. No, 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 that's not, that's not what you can do. But you can see the um, chip here of how it's kind of bubbled on the CPU pad. And so here's a little bit of things that they're posted. So 7600, been running without issues. Then they upgraded to 7800X3D, 24-7 since the date of purchase. No overclocking, just memory expo, profile one. This is the memory that he's using, um, 6000. And then no issues with temps or performance. He's been gaming a decent amount. And then uh, return home after my system idled. Nothing strenuous. And then the AIO is <laughs> toast. Toasty upon removal, and uh, he, uh, he, actually I missed this. He had a postcode of zero zero. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but the uh, pins on the LGA do look intact. Just recessed on the charredness. So 
Uh, you can see there, it looks like they're a little charred. And uh, yeah, um, we've seen something like this where there was another failure about DeBauer. I did watch that video, very interesting video, kind of how he's going through and was actually looking at things underneath the chip. If you haven't do that, uh, done that, definitely go take a look at it. Um, but there is there's something over here, right? It seems to be that Asus board and AMD may have had a little bit more because I believe I read there's more than one person with this easier, uh, issue. Um, but we'll see. Now let's jump over to this other article today that had... And I was planning my videos of what I want to kind of get out there. And this video was, or this article was also out there. And, you know, I, I rail on NVIDIA, or I had a video on NVIDIA, so I might as well, you know, rail on AMD too of what, what the heck's going on here with their, bro with them breaking stuff. Uh, <laughs> not to blame like AMD or NVIDIA for this stuff, but it's something to be, you know, conscious of. It's all tech, right? It's all electrical stuff. So things can go wrong. And when there's going wrong, Part of me, the engineer in me, wants to figure out why, and then how do we prevent this in the future? Or how do we look out for this? How do we make sure that, as a user, we're not running into this over and over again? But MSI has a BIOS update. So this is something you're probably going to have to watch out for, is that with these 3D chips, since they're coming out after, update your BIOS. Just one of those things. Update the BIOS. Check your BIOS you know, after these CPUs do, and just keep on making sure you stay on top of this until we really know kind of um, how it's ironed out. Now I do understand if you're a little bit cautious because you don't know if the BIOS update, slow stuff down, break stuff or anything else, but that is you're something you're gonna have to weigh, especially if you watch the forums or some um, Reddit places or anything else that has these. It's something you can keep track of here, but um, yeah, there's several reports of burning up. Older BIOS that did not require voltage restrictions, but now MSI does have those voltage restrictions here. Um, on its boards for the 7000 X3D chip. So, you know, they're trying to limit this and making sure that they're staying within range. I'm guessing that there's something where it kind of got over um, the range it was allowed to be in. And, you know, sometimes these brands do like to push it. We've seen it on Intel where they like to push the boards a little bit longer, especially in boost and everything else. But here it is. They are coming down with a, another BIOS, um, yeah, and it looks like uh, Asus is withdrawing old BIOS from many motherboards, uh, so it's all, ex so yeah, you'll see that there's all these uh, chips, and you'll see here on this person, X, HXL, uh, what is it, at 9550, Pro, so here you go on the supported BIOS versions, uh, valid. So they're pulling out all 3D chips. So yeah, there is that, and this is one of those things where you have these voltages, everything else. These 3D chips are you know different, and so this isn't something that we've seen in the past. And, uh, and I guess what has happened now is that we're seeing kind of the growing pains that I expected with the first generation. And you're seeing some of them here. I'm guess you're not gonna really see this probably on the server side as if at all, because they are much more restricted. People aren't overclocking them and going down that route. But when you have something like this, when you have a chip like this that is uh, unique, powerful, and maybe you might have missed something in testing. Um, this is what happens. One thing I would like to do, and if AMD sees this and they have an engineer that wants to reach out, I like to hear about how they're going about testing. I like to hear a lot about, a lot about AMD's testing. Um, actually, everyone's testing. But um, how are they going about this to kind of make sure, even if it's like MSI or ASUS, how they're going to buy about this? Because what it seems to me is that one thing I like to see here, and that's really good, MSI is already out like this. You see Asus doing the RMA. I think we're going to see a lot more of these um, board manufacturers get through, and when there's an issue, either pull the old BIOS or and only have the new ones, or they're going to you know update BIOS faster and more readily just to make sure that if there is an issue, they're minimizing how many people can get damaged by this and encouraging people to update their BIOS. At what point, though, 
do these bios and Microsoft and these motherboard manufacturers say, hey, w because of how these processors are today, right? These processors are not just a processor like, you know, 15 years, 20 years ago that were basically weren't many changes on them, right? The, a lot of hardware stuff. Now we have a lot of microcode and we have different things to help, you know, scheduling the processor, avoid security flaws, all that stuff, right? In the processor. So when does Microsoft and Linux, right, go together and say, and these motherboard manufacturers and say, hey, when we have a firmware update, we want to make sure that this is pushed out to everybody that has these boards. We don't want to wait for somebody that um, is going to update uh, their BIOS at this time. We want to make sure we get this out to avoid a catastrophic effect that you like a burnt processor or something like that or a uh, you know GPU malfunction or whatever it is. Can we get these firmware updates pushed out through your platform? And we've already seen that in different ways. You know, Microsoft has some of this technology to be able to do that. So does Linux, all these things. And so you, you could actually put this in where these are starting to get pushed out. And if you want the latest and greatest right away, um, these latest BIOS, these betas, whatever, you still have that opportunity to do it manually. But if you want it to um, go down and be in a release cycle, they could push it through these other ones. I think that that's going to be eventually something we're going to see because of how these processors are designed and going forward. They're just going to get more complex and have more of this microcode on them down the line. So let me know what your thoughts are here. I've rambled on here a little bit, but um, this is something that to me is very fascinating, right? I, I, the, the downside is the user doesn't have his computer, but and the companies are responding, but the fascinating thing to me is going through and understanding, hey, how do we, you know, then now iterate, make better testing, all that other stuff, make better designs, make sure the software is getting out to the user so that they can all have a good experience. Because in the, in the, in the end, I really want to have users to have a good experience. You bought the device, you have the computer, let's use it to what you wanted to use it for and stop letting hardware and software get in the way and preventing you from actually doing what you want productivity gaming whatever else so with that thank you guys for watching thank you for supporting this channel super thanks watching the videos liking sharing all that stuff hitting the bell icon i really do appreciate it you guys are great and until next time god bless